Hello, I'm Rahul on the Fun Robotics Network, and in this video, we'll be taking a look at some of the high scoring gameplay at the FTC Decode Preview event in Flower Mound, Texas. We'll be exploring how teams are approaching intakes from full width intakes to double sided ones, and how teams are playing and counteracting defense. Check out more on this episode of Fun Analysis. This video on fun is brought to you by our viewers, supporters, members, and also in partnership with the following. Take on the decode season with Animark. FTC teams can discover great components such as Animark's 3-inch mechanic wheels, programmable servos, sensors that detect distance, color, orientation, and many more solutions for your team. Find this and more at Animark.com and count on Animark for the reliable service that teams expect. FRCTs has been trusted by over 200 first teams to save on custom shirts and team apparel. Founded by first alumni and offering a free 14-day turnaround with faster options available, your team can apply for a sponsorship and get a quote when you scan the QR code or go to FRCTs.com. We're going to be taking a look at match 7, where on the blue alliance, we've got team It Can Lunar 21171, who we recently had a behind the bot on, which you should definitely check out, and their sister team, team 19564, team It Can Solar. And on the red alliance, we've got team 19502, the Moment Makers, and team 23213, Open Source. Now, to start off this match, we're going to see some really interesting strategies develop in how the alliances are approaching the autonomous period. We're gonna see it, Team It Can Lunar have a really good shot from long range to start off the game. And I think that's gonna be really big for teams is developing consistent shots from the far zone, especially in autonomous, to better coordinate with your partners. Now, going on a bit forward, we see them hit those shots from the long range. But next, we're gonna see what has the makings of a really well-coordinated autonomous from the Blue Alliance. We're gonna see Team It Can Solar immediately go after their initial three shots to go open the ramp to allow for all the future shots to fall in as classified. While team 21171, it can, uh, Lunar is gonna quickly intake the balls and go to shoot them. And we're gonna see that play out here where they're pretty well coordinated and they don't collide with each other at all, which is really impressive. And I think teams are gonna be, have to really wanna look into that and get, even if it means getting practice with alliances before competitions so that they can avoid collisions autonomous and have really high scoring autonomous. We can see they almost end up right next to each other, which just shows how well coordinated their autonomous is. Now going to the tell up period, there's gonna be a key, few big things we wanna look at. Uh, one is gonna be how teams use, are using their intake. Both teams on the blue lines have really wide robot intakes and team two, three, two, one, three, open source has a double-sided intake as well, which, which is gonna prove to be really helpful. Now, the second thing we wanna look at is how, especially open source is avoiding penalties, which is gonna be really key later in the game when the score is really close. Uh, as soon as tell up, the tell up period starts, we're gonna see the team, the, team, the moment makers go to open the latch which gives team it can uh, lunar the key to okay now it's our turn to go and immediately intake balls from that area because they know artifacts are going to spill into that secret tunnel zone and human player zone and that the red alliance robots cannot touch them we're going to see them quickly go and touch that latch and we're going to see uh if i go back a second we're going to see team open source recognize that it can lunar is here and that it's a very dangerous position to be in because of the risk of penalties and even touching them while they're in that secret tunnel zone will incur penalties. So they quickly get out of there, which gives team It Can Lunar the chance to use their super wide intake and pick up uh, pick up balls from the center. Now we're gonna see on the other hand, team Moment Makers has a slightly smaller intake, which especially when artifacts get trapped in the corner, it can be more difficult to, um, to grab the balls that are fully in the corner, but it, they do get it relatively quickly here, but it's important for teams to consider because of the amount of how common it's gonna be for artifacts to be in the corner. Now, this is gonna be the first of three in instances we're gonna see in this match where um, team open source has to shoot while being nudged slightly by one of the Blue Alliance teams. And they do it really impressively throughout this match, which I think teams can use as inspiration in sort of developing software that allows them to shoot while moving. We're gonna see team It Can Solar sort of nudging them while they're shooting, yet they still go three for three on those shots, which is immensely impressive, especially considering how light they seem to be compared to It Can Solar. Um, Traditionally, heavier bots like the bots on the Blue Alliance or heavier bulkier bots might be more advantageous in situations, but if lighter nimble bots can combat this by software that allows them to shoot by moving, that gives them a huge advantage. Going forward a little, we're gonna see an example of where uh, team open source's double-sided intake comes into key. They're gonna pick up this purple ball from this human player zone 
and another green ball from the human player zone, and then immediately go around to grab this purple ball that rolled out of the classifier ramp. Now, this is something that any other robot with just a one-sided intake would need to turn 360 or 180 degrees for, but with their double-sided intake, they're able to quickly grab this purple, this green, and then grab this purple that rolls out from the other side, which really helps them in aiding their cycle times. Now, if going forward a little, what we're gonna see is that uh, teams are gonna continue cycling, but the Blue Alliance especially is gonna use their large frame to sort of help them in while they're cycling, slowing down open source and moment makers. We're gonna see it can Lunar here use their large frame and quickly and slightly nudge open source while they're heading on their way across to the other side. They nudge them, gets them off course, veers them off course, their path is no longer a straight line. Now, the next thing we'll see is that as open source opens a latch, it can Lunar's drivers recognize, okay, we know this is the time for uh, us to go to the secret tunnel zone and human player zone and pick up a bunch of artifacts. And I think we teams can definitely take inspiration and learn from how well coordinated it can Lunar's drivers are there. Every time the latch is open, they're recognizing that it's the best opportunity to go get free artifacts because they know they're completely protected in that zone. A simple touch is going to incur penalties, which means they can easily intake. Um, we're going to watch them go. We're going to use their, we're going to watch them use their super wide intake which allows them to quickly grab three balls. They're just slamming into the corner here and grabbing three artifacts, which which is really impressive because compared to something that's a really thin intake, which is just one ball or two balls wide, which their intake appears to be three balls wide, it allows them to quickly grab and really increase their cycle time. Now, going forward a little, we're gonna see teams continue to use these advantages, but we're gonna fast forward a bit to um, the next point, which we're gonna see once again, team it can Lunar using their wide frame to push past, they're kind of sandwiched between the red alliance here with the moment makers and open source, but they push past them almost as if it's nothing. And I think that's gonna be where teams who choose to go for a more heavier or bigger bot are gonna see advantages. They're not gonna be as affected, not just when they're shooting, but even when teams are just moving from zone to zone, just general bumps and nudges are just not gonna affect them as much and they're gonna be able to keep straighter line paths. While we saw early on, lighter robots, smaller robots like open source or moment makers, they might get more veered off course when they get nudged or hit along the way. Uh, next thing we're gonna see is uh, a second, the second instance in this match of open source shooting on the move, which is super impressive. And this one is more direct. They're getting pushed directly by it can Lunar and they're gonna shoot their shots and actually hit two out of three of them, which if we replay that is super impressive because all they're almost getting pushed directly from what looks like at least a 20 or 30 pound robot directly from the side into their and they still get two out of three balls. And that's that's a huge advantage of how, how a smaller robot could be if you're able to mitigate it through software. Now we're gonna see open source's double-sided intake come into play once again. They have this purple ball right here, right in their front of their, this the backside of their intake. And then they quickly go to intake this other purple ball right in that far launch zone. And they're able, essentially able to get those two two artifacts super quickly, while a, a robot that only had a one-sided intake, just getting getting those two artifacts would take immensely longer than two-sided. And I think that shows how valuable uh, a two-sided intake can be when artifacts are rolling around, when teams are missing their shots, artifacts roll around everywhere. When the artifact, when the latches get open and the classifier ramps get unfilled, artifacts go everywhere. And having a double-sided intake to really maneuver around the field is proving to be super helpful for uh, open source, which is something that teams can definitely consider. Now, if we go forward a little to the next track point, we're gonna see team. We're gonna see uh, more how the Blue Alliance is using their super wide intake. It can Solar has once again a three ball wide intake, while the Moment Makers have it looks like what's like around a one ball intake and a more compact robot frame. And it can Lunar is sort of able to use this large robot size and large intake size to fight over and grab this grab this artifact before Moment Makers can. We're gonna see them slightly nudge out of the way and grab that from the side. It looks like they do have some vectored ramps on the side, which allows them to that artifact to enter the center of the robot. And that kind of shows how a wide intake is proving to be super beneficial for the Blue Alliance. Now, going forward a bit, what we're gonna see is, is more defense and interaction here. We can see the three robots back to back to back, which kind of shows but if we look at the far launch zone, it's super empty, which kind of points into question that if teams can develop consistent uh, 
shooters from the far launch zone, it's going to be so much more open and so much less defense. Defense, like, def so much less prone to defense because of how little robots there generally are in that zone. Now, um, going forward a little, the, ne the next key thing we're going, we're going to see is that open source's drivers are once again making the super good recognition that Idcan Lunar is heading over to the secret tunnel zone, which means that open source being in that secret tunnel zone is, a, is really dangerous because they can incur a ton of penalties. So they quickly get out of the way. And that leaves Ican Lunar, a team able to quickly grab artifacts. And this this kind of shows a level of understanding of the rules from both drivers of open source and Ican Lunar that I think teams should really develop in their drivers and reviewing that competition manual and knowing what penalties are incurred at the secret tunnel zone, what zones are protected and what are not, to understand when you need to get out of a zone and when it's optimal to go quickly into a zone. Now, going on, what we're gonna see next is the third instance of open source having a really good ability at shooting while moving. This time they're getting put. They're going to be getting pushed by both two um, blue alliance robots, which are definitely on on the bigger side, and they're able to like I think hit one out of three of their shots. We're going to see we're going to see them do it right now, where they get pushed from the side by both Ican Lunar and Solar, and they're going to hit one out of three, but barely miss the other two. The other two were pretty close, and I think this shows how. If teams can develop consistent shooting while moving, it's going to be a huge advantage in, in beating these really bigger and more larger robots. And that's really impressive by open source. Now, going forward, the next thing we're going to see is how teams are sort of approaching the motif strategy at in the end game. We know that um, motifs and autonomous require some sort of indexing or sorting, but in Teleup, you can uh, it can Lunar is using the human player to allow them to get this purple, this green, purple, purple pattern, and quick, which matches the colors in the classified ramp and what's the what's needed, which allows them to just drive straight into this and just pick them up without having to worry about the order or things like that. And that shows how teams can use the human player zone to really efficiently grab those artifacts from the zone. Now the last thing we're going to see is open source make a quick beeline to get a partial park in and that those five points in the partial park are actually going to be match changing if penalties didn't exist. If we see the final score, we're going to see that uh, the red alliance with open source and moment makers won by 28 points. But if we take away penalties, that last second end game partial park was the difference maker that that let them win. And I think that shows how crucial those last second end games and if teams can develop um, both robots parked fully within, that would be those last second points can be super crucial in matches like these. Thank you for listening to this episode of Fun Analysis. Let us know in the comments what you think of the strategies of a double-sided intake and a full width intake, as well as how teams can employ defensive strategies to their game. Make sure to like and subscribe to keep up to date on future videos like these. And I'm Rahul, signing off on Fun Analysis. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. FRCTs has been trusted by over 200 first teams to save on custom shirts and team apparel. Founded by first alumni and offering a free 14-day turnaround with faster options available, your team can apply for a sponsorship and get a quote when you scan the QR code or go to frcts.com. Take on the decode season with Animark. FTC teams can discover great components such as Animark's 3-inch mechanic wheels, programmable servos, sensors that detect distance, color, orientation, and many more solutions for your team. Find this and more at Animark.com and count on Animark for the reliable service that teams expect.